James II, his brother, he succeeded to the crown. Everybody said, oh my God, what will happen next? But the coronation went off without incident. Nobody lifted a finger. Nothing happened. James II was 52. He was courageous, immoral, and inept. <laughs> he distinguished himself in public service in the Navy. He was a very good sailor, and he did well as head of the Navy. Everybody liked him. He'd been banished to satisfy the anti-Catholics, and that embittered him toward his subjects. He'd married twice. He married first a Protestant woman, Anne Hyde. Her father was a major figure in Charles II's restoration government. And Anne Hyde had borne two daughters, Mary and Anne, and we'll hear about them. But Anne Hyde died, and the widow James married immediately a princess, Mary of Modena, a Catholic princess. Here we go again. Well, no sooner had James become king then there was a rebellion against him led by the Duke of Monmouth. Well, who in the heck is the Duke of Monmouth, you ask? Well, back before time, when Charles was not Charles II, but Charles in exile in Holland, he had had a long relationship with Lucy Walters, who had borne him a son. Well, when Charles became king, he invited the son to come live at his court, created him Duke of Monmouth his bastard son. The Duke of Monmouth thought that he should be king. After all, he was the son of Charles II, bar sinister or no. Well, of course, James said, you aren't. And they went to, to, into a battle over it, and the royal army led by James put an end to the Duke of Monmouth and all his followers. They were all put to death. There was a set of assizes set up all over England where judges tried the miscreants in this rebellion. Hanging Judge Jeffreys did away with a thousand men who were implicated in this rebellion. Oh, very efficient then. Well, then now the, the fears of many were manifest when King James began to appoint Catholics to high office. And then he invited the papal legate to come to England. There hadn't been a papal legate in England since Mary Tudor's time before Elizabeth. So this was, this was panic time in Parliament. James was obviously reconverting England to Rome because many churches now were dumping out their Anglican ministers and putting in Catholic priests. And then in 1688, his second wife, Mary of Modena, gave birth to their first and only child, a son whom they named James Edward Stewart and baptized him a Catholic. That broke the terrible building effort to do something about it, and the opposition movement burst into the open. Across over the channel into the Netherlands was William, Prince of Orange, ruler of the Dutch states, and he saw this as an opportunity. He wanted England to come in and help him stop Louis XIV. If he would go over, he thought, and put an end to James II, who was his father-in-law because he'd married James's daughter Mary. Are you keeping track? <laughs> if he put an end to James II, Parliament would make him king. So he led an army across the Channel. He was encouraged to do this by the magnates in London who wanted to get rid of James. James formed an army and went out to meet him. James' army went over to William. Ah! Abandoned the king, James fled, was captured. Oh, worse, embarrassing. Well, now William was in charge of the country uh, with the English parliament uh, behind him. But what to do about James? They didn't want to capture him. They wanted him to escape. And some idiot had arrested him. Well, they said, well, put him in a house down on Dover coast where he could see France and open the window. And in a few days, James had vanished to France. What a relief.